Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is Carlos Bogosian, Chair of the Act and Chair of the Connecticut Chiropractic Board of Examiners. And I'd like to call this meeting on February 1st to order at 9.09 a.m. And Ms. Tara Palusa, would you mind doing a roll call for us? Yes. Uh, Carlos? Present. Perne? Present. Judy? Not present yet. Michelle? Here. Meredith? Not here. Sean? Here. And Pamela? Not present. Thank you. Thank you. And we have some guests here that I'd like to maybe introduce you to, please. Yes. Good morning, Mary Alice Moore Lenhart, and I represent uh, Dr. David Steinberg, who's here to my left. Thank, Thank you. you. And also, we have our attorney, attorney Kevin. Kevin Hanstead and here is present. Thank you so much. Uh, so has everyone had a chance to read the agenda? Excellent. So the first agenda item is approval of minutes from last meeting of November 30th. Uh, any questions on the minutes? All right, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the minutes as presented. I make a motion to adopt the minutes. All right, we have a motion from Dr. Amati, second from Dr. Rabatham. Any discussions? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, the minutes are adopted as presented. All right, the second agenda item <clears throat> is the Federation of Chiropractic Licensing Boards 2024 meeting and the National Board of Chiropractic Examiners 2024 meeting. Um, so the, this uh, meeting is going to be a, the FCLB meeting is going to be a 97th annual conference that's going to take place uh, in Phoenix from May 1st to May 5th. The Connecticut Chiropractic Board of Examiners has been a long-standing member of the Federation of Chiropractic Licensing Boards, and uh, this uh, meeting is really designed to bring licensing board members from all over the country together for the purpose of sharing uh, resources and networking and under, having a better understanding of regulatory, uh, I guess, uh, landscape of what's happening around the country. And I can tell you that I've been attending this meeting since 2016 and it's been uh, really, really resourceful. So what I'd like to do, I'd like to sort of briefly share with you what the agenda is and what you could expect from the meeting. Uh, I know that uh, there's always, uh, they have a board member, new board member training that's done through their, uh, to the FCLB's council. And this is a great opportunity for new board members who are on the any licensing boards to come in to have a better understanding of what it means to be a member of a licensing board. You know, a lot of times chiropractors uh, who get appointed to licensing boards, uh, they've come from the professional advocacy mindset, but certain, certain serving on licensing boards, we understand that our, our hat is to protect the public. So that's really uh, one of the, probably one of the most benefits of going to attending these meetings to start separating what it means to be a licensing board member versus professional advocacy, which is a huge difference there. Uh, they also have uh, various programs. One is called Navigating the AI Frontier, Regulatory Challenges, Opportunities for State Licensing Boards. So obviously the AI is something that's uh, starting to impact even the way some regulations are happening. Uh, a couple other things that they have is Chiropractic Board Legal Advisors Committee. Kevin, is some that you might be interested in is these are where you have, they have uh, uh, attorneys that serve on licensing boards from around the country. They come together and they, again, they sort of share best practices and what are some of the things happening across the country that might be common amongst other boards. And they have a Chiropractic Board Administrators meeting. Same idea, these are board administrators. They get together, they have their own counsel. Um, and another thing they have, like in this highlight, I'm just sort of going through the highlights of this, how remediation works, it, a peak inside the classroom. So again, the idea of uh, what does it mean if you have someone who's coming from the board and the board has maybe um, the order that we have, how could you offer remediation courses for them? So maybe some of that could also be taken into consideration. Um, it, and then obviously the National Board of Power Examiners, uh, they're going to have their annual meeting. Uh, this is where the, um, the Delegates, they join together for the annual meeting and they get updates from the national boards on the exams, all the uh, pre licensure exams and what's going on with them. And I can tell you there's a lot of updates coming up. There has been some proposals um, that's uh, that's out there right now. One is the computer based testings that for the longest time, those uh, part one, part two and part three uh, computer based exams were only offered three times a year. And one of the most pressing needs that was requested from students and colleges to have more testing opportunities. So the National Board has actually uh, gone through uh, 
looking at how they can bring some innovation and technology to offer more testing opportunities. So there is a possibility that we offer them nine times a year. So that'd be very beneficial to students. So students that won't have to wait for such a long time to take the test. And part four exam, the practical exam, uh, is something that uh, was first introduced in 1996. Um, and uh, it was actually, it was a very proud moment for, for the chiropractic profession because that was the very first time that we, that the national boards offered the practical exam, but also set the profession apart because being the first health occupation to require a demonstration of a competency through a clinical exam. Uh, so and, uh, that was 30 years ago, obviously. So they're, uh, what they're proposing is to change that from a s multiple single point stations, right? Either the st stations are history, diagnosis, uh, physical exam technique to more mm -hmm. of a single station where it's more examining guided. Meaning that in a, in a real world, when a patient comes into uh, to our offices, uh, the, the doctor starts the history and moves up all the way to the exam, makes a you know, di working diagnosis, a differential diagnosis, make a recommendation for care. So the, the idea is to make a more uh, real world encounter uh, type of exam. So, and also there's a proposal of centralizing the test. That means offering, uh, right now there are, the test is offered in 12 different locations all over the country twice a year. So the proposal is to centralize that in one location where the examinees will travel to that one location. So but again, you're going to hear about all this stuff at the National Board's annual meeting. Um, I just want to share that with you. A um, couple of things that happens in these meetings. Uh, there is always uh, uh, we have <clears throat> delegates and alternate delegates that this board selects to attend. Uh, when, if they attend the meeting, they're designated delegates and alternates. So I would like to uh, again uh, talk, open up the discussion about who would you like to recommend to be a delegate, delegate and alternate delegate for Federation of Power Licensing Board's meeting. What's the date for the national board? They're the same thing. So the week, so the way it works is that the meeting starts on Thursday. Thursday uh, is FCLB. Uh, Friday is national boards and Saturday is FCLB. So it is the same location, same spot. The difference is just that. Yeah, what's that? Yeah. Yeah. Location. Phoenix, Arizona. Which camera are you interested in going again? I'll be happy to go. I mean, I'll, I'll be happy to attend. I am. I have to attend because I'm the president of national support, so I'm going to be there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, but obviously, I'm, I, I, you know, every meeting I bring this up because I, I like to see more participation from our board <laughs> attending these meetings. It's, I found it very resourceful. It just helps us to become better board members and better understanding what's going on. So I'm happy to go if you'd like to uh, designate me as a delegate. But obviously, I would love to see someone else also select as the alternate delegate. If you don't know, I'll ball and told you. <laughs> I like to consider the alternate. Okay. Excellent. Good morning. Do you mind on the record saying that Ms. Caspers is here? Yes. Okay. Um, for the record, for attendance, um, Judy Caspers is now present. Thank you. Thank you. All right, great. So we have a. Yeah. So if we would maybe entertain a motion to uh, for designate myself as delegate and Dr. Botham is all known for the FCOB. So moved. Okay. All right, we're motion. There's a second. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. And opposed? Here and none that carries. Now we need to do the same for national boards. Now it could be again, uh, we can have someone else as an alternate if you like. So it doesn't have to be Dr. Because again, those are two separate organizations. I'd like to move uh, to nominate uh, Dr. Bogosian and Dr. Rabat uh, as the delegate and Dr. Rabatham as the alternate for the National Board of. All right, All right. thank you. There is a motion and a second. A second. All right, all in favor? Yeah. All right, any opposed? You're not on the motion carries. Well, thank you so much. And uh, <coughs> we'll do everything possible to come back and bring you information. Again, this is just because the alternate and then the delegate and alternate are, are designated. This is open to all the board members. So it doesn't have to, you know, that means you can attend. So there's no, obviously, a, I, and there are many boards, by the way, that they bring the entire board members there. So, you know, I go there by myself and sometimes like I feel I'm like they're like, you're the only one from Connecticut. I'm like, well, I, you know, so I want to see our board more participation from our board. 
just on vote. Is that it? Like the delegate is the only one for vote. Or there is no voting in this. Uh, so uh, there is. There could be elections. There could be resolutions. So yeah. Um, if the if the delegate is not there, the alternate would vote. Yeah. Very good. Uh, any questions on the meeting? All right. And the next agenda item is the consideration of a memorandum of decision, petition number 2020-1021 for Dr. David Steinberg. Has everyone had a chance to review the memorandum of decision? Uh, I understand that uh, Attorney Shulman uh, drafted this and Attorney General's office also had a chance to review it. So I will entertain a motion to adopt the memorandum of decision for Dr. Steinberg as presented. Mm -hmm. All right, there's a motion from Dr. Ferrani. Is there a second? Second. Yes. Okay. All in favor? Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Thank you so much. Um, now, the, the, the next thing that's not I like to talk was our next meeting dates. Um, I know we have them. Yeah, 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 go on go over that with us one more time, please. Mm -hmm. And as she's pulling it up, um, I know that uh, we had met uh, in one of our previous meetings that we talked about that we like to have these meetings in person. But as you know, it's the past two meetings within the virtual because there's only approval of minutes. So I didn't feel right to bring everyone here for a five minute meeting. But uh, is everyone still does everyone still prefer to have in person meetings? Yeah. If it's if the brevity of it is as such, you know, like it's just we're doing minutes and it's pure very virtual. But if we're gonna go longer than that, then you know, I mean, person. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yes. Yeah. May I, as a non-member of the board, comment? Please. Um, thank you. So. As an attorney, I would just request that when there's a hearing, the hearings, the at least the option of an in-person hearing be given. Um, and I think as a member of the bar and trial attorneys, we all feel that decisions and determinations of credibility um, are more, uh, uh, you know, you. It, you're better able to make those determinations when there's an in-person hearing. Um, but if the parties all agree that it's not necessary and the hearing can be remote, there's that's not a problem. But in many instances, we believe as, as counsel representing our clients that it's important to have that in-person uh, hearing. So if you would consider that, I would appreciate it. Speaking on behalf of attorneys who represent chiropractors before the board. Thank you. Thank less, you. Less technical difficulties. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Less technical difficulties. Yeah. So that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we have um, the next dates are, are shown on the screen. May 16th would be the next meeting, uh, September 12th and November 21st. And those are the scheduled regular meetings. But of course, if, if the dates or times need to change, you can yeah. that and then schedule a special meeting. The agenda is set also, obviously, at the meeting, and I'd like to encourage the board members, if there's anything that you'd like to have placed on the agenda, please let me know, and I'll communicate that with Tyra, and we'll place on the agenda, because, you know, um, the agenda, if there's anything that you like to uh, add to the agenda, whereas, uh, it, whether it's any type of uh, education information or resources that we need, please let us know so we can put down the agenda. Okay. Uh, any new business that you want to bring in front of the board, anyone? Board members? Okay. Very good. Well, here in nine, we'll, <laughs> we'll today a motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> you you got to do it. All right. So it's uh, your motion. Second. Second. All right. So we adjourn the meeting at 9.23 a.m. Thank you so much. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good when the meetings are nice, yeah. nice and quick yeah. like this, right? Yeah. <laughs>